Welcome to lecture 10 which is on height determination from the stereo pair. So, this lecture basically you have to understand uh, with the previous lecture you know whatever has been covered in the previous lecture it is in the same continuation we are using the same stereo pair to determine the height of the various points in the overlap region. So, you in this lecture you are going to determine that uh, in the previous lecture we have taken some measurements and how to use those measurements now to do the computation and also you are going to learn to derive a relationship mathematical relationship for the height. So, the as we know that uh, the height determination or assessment of the height is very very important. Uh, in the from the photographs because we come to know what is the elevation difference in the terrain which point is higher by how much uh, magnitude it is higher. And we are habituated in normal way also to, to see the different objects with the different heights. So, we are going to use our stereo pair and photogrammetric principle to determine the height from the stereo pair. So, these uh, height is uh, determination values they are very very important in uh, uh, almost all civil engineering projects which deals with the earth surface. So, whenever we are designing any activity on the ground we need not only the extent of the ground, but also need what is the elevation of the ground. So, that we can plan our project we can lay out at a proper slope. If ground is to be filled then we have to fill the ground, if the ground is to be cut then we have to carry out the cutting of the ground. So, these all uh, computations the height is very very important. Whenever we are doing a project related to the alignment, alignment of a railway line, alignment of a highway again the height is playing between the two point height is playing very very important role. So, that is why we are determining the height from photogrammetric methods. As we know that there are different approaches by which we can determine the height of the objects. So, in geometrics engineering there are ground based methods are there where we are using digital levels to determine the height where we are using the total station survey, we use GPS survey in order to carry out the height measurements on the ground. We uh, have another method which is called vehicle based survey. In the vehicle based survey there are certain instrumentation which we can fix on the top of the vehicle and try to determine the height. So, here we have a laser based devices here we have the GPS system and uh, vehicle is moving in that direction and it is giving us all three dimensional coordinate. The third category is the aerial based which we are discussing today that how the aerial photogrammetry could be used and here under aerial based survey the drone technology and UAV technology is also playing very very important role. So, we can determine the height from those images as well. Then the last method is the satellite base where we have the data which is taken from a much much higher altitude. So, if we look at the four methods you know our working platform is different at different heights. So, whenever when we are working at different different heights we are taking the measurements and the accuracy of the measurements is also affected by ground based method we can get very very high accuracy, but it is time consuming method to determine the height. So, it depends upon the extent of the area, it depends upon the accuracy of the height which is required in our project and also the time available to us in order to collect the data we can go for a particular method, but here in this lecture we are learning that how the aerial photographs could be used to determine the height. This is a shadow based method is a, a very old method here 
uh, we know that any object which has a certain height will cast the shadow on the ground uh, and the length of the shadow will depend upon the sun angle, uh, the time of the day. So, so, the sun angle will actually due to that sun angle the object will cast the shadow on the ground and if we can somehow measure the length of the shadow and if we know what is the altitude of the sun, what is the angle of the sun, azimuth of the sun, then we can use a trigonometrical relationship which is h is equal to l tan alpha where l is the length of the shadow on the photograph and alpha is the sun angle. So, we will take tangent of this multiply the two together to determine the height of the object. Now, the sun angle will depend upon the latitude, upon the day, upon the time also we know all that. So, uh, it has to be measured also very, very precisely. So, here in this particular method when we are using shadow based method on the aerial photograph using a single photograph here we, uh, we are not using the stereo photogrammetry we have to uh, assume something and what we are assuming is that the ground is leveled because the shadow is falling on the level ground which we are measuring the object is truly vertical. So, these are the two assumptions which are made in that and object top must be sharply defined. So, that it can create a very very distinct shadow image. So, if these are there then aerial photogrammetry have been used to determine the height of the building using this concept of the shadow there are some literature available on that. So, this diagram it shows that there is a uh, tall structure and with height capital H and the sun angle is alpha. So, this is somewhere uh, the sun is here, this is sun and it is at an angle alpha and the sun actually is casting the shadow on the ground due to the height of the object and the shadow length is capital L. So, you know the relationship trigonometrical relationship h is equal to L tan alpha. So, height of that particular tower, particular structure can be determined if you are measuring length of the shadow precisely and if you know the sun elevation very, very precisely. This measurement again you are doing on the aerial photograph using the parallax scale. So, the shadow height method has certain limitations and some limitations are that we know that the aerial photograph have the distortion. This method can be used very satisfactorily provided the shadows are long and sharp. So, that you can measure them very, very accurately from the photographs. So, this is one condition if it is not there then you will have some error in the height estimation. If the object is located at a isolated place then only so that the shadow is not obstructed it is free. The shadow is not falling onto the another object shadow is falling onto the ground. So, it is available in the open space that is the uh, essential condition when you are measuring this the time of exposure and the approximate geographical position of the locality must be known in order to calculate the inclination of the sun. So, th these parameters will help us in determining the exact elevations of the sun. Method is not suitable for dense vegetated areas because intermixing of the shadow uh, onto the trees. Difficulty in obs uh, is observed in measuring the shadow length of the broad leaved species which have generally irregular ground shape. So, if there is a regular shape of the object then this method is absolutely fine in order to determine. So, in absence of a stereo pair if you have a single object and if you can measure the shadow very clearly then you can determine. The second method which has already been explained in the lecture is the relief displacement method. So, every object a taller object will have a certain relief displacement 
on the object because we can see the top and we can see the bottom of the tower and a very popular relationship which we have established also in our previous lecture we are determining the height of the tower. So, h is the height of this tower a a 0 which is shown in the diagram we can determine by measuring the d distance by uh, uh, measuring the r distance capital H is the flying height. So, this is another method this method also uh, we can use a single photograph. So, the relief displacement method will provide good results provided the photograph is vertical photograph. So, that means what has less than 3 degree tilt we cannot use this method on a tilted photograph. So, that the principal point and another point they are coinciding with each other on a truly vertical photograph we know that. If the flight altitude above the base of the object can be precisely determined then we can use this method. If the top of the object or the base of the object they are clearly visible on the aerial photographs because if you go closer to the principal point top and bottom will merge together and you can see only the plan. When the degree of image displacement is large enough to permit its accurate measurements because uh, any measurement error will be reflected in the computation of the height. So, this method is suitable only when we have done that. The next method is the parallax measurement method which we have discussed in our previous lecture also we have taken some parallax bar measurements. So, we are using here when we have taken the uh, top uh, image parallax bar observations bottom image parallax bar observations we know that we can calculate the differential parallax. So, in this relationship very popular relationship small h is equal to capital H multiplied by dp divided by p plus dp. So, here dp is the differential parallax and p is the absolute parallax. So, we know from our previous knowledge in the previous lecture how to determine the differential parallax from the two values and how to determine the absolute parallax when I am doing the measurement with the help of the parallax scale of a particular point. So, if I know the flying height also capital H then using the relationship I can determine the small h which is the height of the object. So, we are determining here uh, the uh, taking some parallax bar measurements and determining capital P determining the differential parallax and substituting in this relationship to determine the height of various objects which are present in the overlap region. So, again what you are doing is uh, you have the same stereo pair which has been aligned and uh, you have principal point and conjugate principal point marked on both the photographs and the distance between principal point and conjugate principal point if P 1 is 8.5 and P 2 is 8.3 then the average value average of the two we are replacing in the formula. So, average photo base p would be 8.4. So, this is very very easy to determine from the photograph and taking the average of that and then substituting in the relationship. So, this is one example here how the parallax measurement method have has been used to determine the um, height of this Washington monument. So, this is a Washington monument and its height um, is known to us. So, height of this from the literature is 555 feet and now we are taking certain measurements on the photograph. So, when we are taking certain measurements we find that the parallax of the top and bottom is given 1.46 and 2.06 respectively the scale of the photograph is 4600 and we uh, the height of the um, aircraft 
uh, is given 4600 feet and the average photo distance as I have explained you in the previous slide how this can be calculated. So, if we know all these parameters now we are using the same relationship which I have given in my previous slide and substituting all the values and determining ultimately the height of this Washington monument and it is coming out to be 552 feet from the photogrammetric measurements. So, it shows that the photogrammetric measurements are quite accurate in the sense that you are actually uh, getting a very little difference between the two values. So, you are getting actually a difference of the 3 feet from photogrammetric measurements and from the uh, actual height when you compare the data. But uh, if you take several observations from that you can come to the closer value. So, the parallax bar measurements is uh, uh, quite satisfactory quite reasonable in order to determine the height of the object in absence of the other methods. So, it is a much more accurate method than the previous two methods the shading method or the relief displacement method which I have explained you before and it is reliable than the radial displacement and the shadow method. It is a reliable and it is much much accurate method. But it requires more training and experience to use as compared to the other method because here you are creating a 3D model, you are taking some parallax bar readings, you are taking some measurements with the parallax scale in order to use the elevation formula. So, let us understand now that how we are going to determine the elevations from the stereo pair. So, we are using that overlap region, we are creating a 3D model and then we are using parallax bar measurements uh, to determine the elevation difference. There is one prerequisite when you are measuring the elevations from the photograph. This prerequisite is that like leveling exercise on the ground when you are doing with the conventional leveling equipment the height of one control point is known to you. So, same condition applies here that at least one control point is known in the photograph. That means, I already know the height of that point either from the topographical map or by some other method I am now I am correlating all my measurements with respect to this known point and determining the height of the other points. If this is not there then I can only determine with this method the relative difference between the two points. So, in order to determine the absolute value of the elevation I should know the elevation of one point. Now, since the difference in elevation will also produce the difference in parallax as we have seen. So, the measurement of elevation could be possible when I am taking the difference in the parallax bar or differential parallax reading. So, to measure the elevation of the object from the stereo pair uh, what I require is flying height of the aircraft, how high the aircraft was flying a photo base which we can measure from the stereo pair as I have already shown in the slide explain you the parallax difference using the parallax bar readings and elevation of the known point. So, if I have all this data with me the rest is simple computation, but in order to do that you know we have to again understand this simple figure here and in this figure there are two points with different heights because the ground is undulating. So, let us say the small h a is the height of point a small h b is the point height of point b and now I am uh, looking at the images of these points on a 1 b 1 on the left photo and a 2 b 2 on the right photograph and trying to carry out the measurement. So, we assume that now you have aligned the photograph in the direction of the flight line. So, this relationship has to be understood. So, we are actually correlating uh, the air base capital B with the photo base this is the photo base this is the air base we are correlating again using the property of the similar triangle. So, if you look at this particular figure here 
Now, we are getting uh, similar triangles this is my object A on the ground. So, I have similar triangles. So, this is one triangle and I am getting a triangle actually on the photograph also because I have its image on the left photo image on the right photograph. So, I am projecting this particular line on the right photograph. So, I have another triangle here. So, I am using that property of those two similar triangles and putting up the ratio of the two distances the photo base to the air base. Then it is equal to the focal length upon h minus h a in case of point a this will be capital H minus h a distance. So, this relationship property of the similar triangle will correlate the photo base with the f b upon h minus h a distance. So, here substituting the value of the absolute parallax in this particular formula what is b is the absolute parallax which we have seen in our earlier slide also. So, I can replace this b by p a distance and f b upon h minus h a. So, I have my parallax bar reading absolute parallax of the point also uh, I can correlate it with the focal length the air base distance flying height and the height of the ground point itself. So, once I know this relationship for point A so in the similar way there is a point B. So, if I go to previous slide you can see there is a point B here. So, height of that point is H B. So, now in the same way uh, there will be two similar triangles with point B as we have in case of A. So, we can establish a relationship similarly f b p b upon is equal to f b upon h minus h. So, these two relationships have been derived from the property of the similar triangle and I know now the differential parallax difference in the parallax delta p will be the difference of p b minus p a. So, I substitute the value here in the relationship delta p is equal to p b minus p a that will be equal to f b upon h minus h b minus f b upon h minus h a. So, here in this uh, right hand side the f b is common. So, I take f b common and further do the computation part. So, delta p is f b is common in both. So, when I am doing that computational part I am getting a relationship delta p will be something like this f b upon h minus h a and divided by h minus h a into h minus h b. So, this relationship I can replace in terms of the p b relationship which I have already derived or in other words uh, this h b minus h a I take all that to the left side. If I take h b minus h a to the left side what I am left is delta p upon delta p into h minus h a divided by p b. So, this is uh, a mathematical transformation which has been done from this to this here. So, h b minus h a what are these the elevation difference of the two points and in this relationship actually uh, we can replace the value of p b, p b will be delta p plus p a. We know that delta p is the differential parallax of the two reading. So, I can replace p b by p a plus delta p by knowing that relationship and h b is on the left side if I take h a on the right side then I get the relationship h b is equal to h a plus delta p upon h minus h a into p b. So, this is a very very uh, important relationship very very popular relationship which you can derive from the uh, stereo photographic figure uh, with the help of the properties of the similar triangle. So, according to this relationship if I know the parallax bar readings which is 
uh, this here delta p differential parallax if i know the absolute parallax which is p a i know the height of the point which is a control point which is a prerequisite and uh, i can determine the height of point b so here what we are assuming is the height of point a is known to me i have taken the parallax bar observation for point a and point b if you take the difference of that it is delta p so h is known to me delta p is known to me p delta p is i take the parallax bar reading of point a and point b take the difference of that two it is delta p so everything is known to me here i am going to compute height of point b in the overlap region now same way if i am using the similar kind of uh, approach for another point c suppose there is a point c which is present in the overlap region so i can relate that with respect to a again because a is known to me so i can have a relationship similar for point c so here h a is known to me this is the elevation of the control point delta p delta p means again i will take the parallax bar observation of point c and delta p will be p a minus p c so i have already have p a observations so i can get delta p i already measured the absolute parallax of point a so i can get the height of point c so i am getting the Uh, height of point C in the overlap region. Suppose I have another point D. So similar approach I'll use for point D. So several points this way I can calculate the elevation of the several points by simply taking the parallax bar reading of that point and taking the differential parallax. So we can see here that uh, what are the steps which we have followed in the determination of the height of the various points. We have oriented the stereo pair we have taken the parallax bar reading and we have uh, used this relationship in order to carry out the computational work so we know how to orient the photograph from the previous lecture using the principal point and conjugate principal point on both the photographs and aligning them in the same direction as the direction of the flight line we also know how to take the parallax bar measurements of point a and point b which are present in left photo as well as in the right photo take the algebraic difference of that and determine the absolute parallax of the point then we know this particular relationship and in this relationship when we are substituting the values we know the elevation of point a and with respect to that we are determining the elevation of the unknown points unknown point is hb unknown point is hc and hd and so on these are all unknown points now what happens is when you are computing the height uh, using the uh, parallax bar reading there could be errors present in the computation of the height and we have to ensure that uh, our uh, computations are correct so in order to do that uh, what we are we are taking certain precautions we are locating and marking the flight line on the photographs so that our orientation of the photograph is proper so you have to ensure that there is no orientation error and when you are marking the principal point and conjugate principal point they have been marked properly error in the parallax and photo coordinate measurement is not there if the error is present we are definitely going to get the computational error there is no shrinkage and expansion of the paper photograph because sometimes this happens with respect to time with respect to the temperature difference there is no difference in the flying height of the stereo pair so both the photographs have been taken from the same flying height the photograph has no tilt if it has a tilt the error is going to bound in our observations and the height of the control point which is known to us it is error free so 
we can actually minimize the error by taking certain precautions while using this particular method parallax bar method in order to determine the height. But it is sometimes inevitable the uh, we have the error in our observation. So, what we are doing actually when we are determining the height of various points we like to determine from the actual observation what is the error. So, in order to do that what we are doing is we are determining the actual elevation of those computed points of those points whose elevation have been computed. We like to see from the topographical map or some other method what is the actual height of those points. So, if I know by other methods actual height of those points and I know by my photogrammetric method the computed height I can calculate how much is the error, how much is the difference between the two and difference between the computed and the actual elevation will be the error in my observations at that point. Now, I have to apply the corrections. So, corrections as we know will be opposite in nature to the error which I am determining at each and every point. So, our next job is drawing the correction contour. So, when I know the error at those points which I have selected for computation of the height, I put up the values and the same way the same approach linear interpolation approach we are using to determine to draw the correction contours. So, we are drawing the correction contours. So, this is this the example of that you know how the contours can be plotted depending upon the minimum and the maximum value which is present high error which is present in my observations. So, once I know minimum and maximum value I can select a certain contour interval I can interpolate the values and draw the contours. So, once I know these correction contours with the help of these correction contours at those points now I know what is the correction required. So, I can now select some more points whose height is to be determined and I know the corrections which is to be applied at that point. So, this is the uh, one of the ways actually to uh, make the corrections in the observed value. Thank you very much.